so hello everyone uh, last time what we discussed was the general method that we normally take up for uh, cognitive analysis right so we discussed about um, uh, interview we discussed about content analysis today we are going to discuss about the focus group so what exactly this particular uh, uh, method is and how do we take uh, take up this type of uh, tool for our study and what are the benefits of this particular type of uh, tool or techniques okay so let us first understand uh, the little bit history and uh, you know type of this particular method so it's very simple way uh, for evaluating the any kind of software or any other products that we normally develop and try to get information that how the users or end users are thinking about that product okay so it may start for the uh, initial stage in the initial stage like you know if you want to understand the uh, understand about a particular product uh, at the initial stage before intervention or at the end also when you have developed a new product or when you have developed a new a new method or new intervention then also you can take up this tool for the for evaluation okay so uh, normally as its nomenclature says that it's a focus group group right so it's a group uh, of people to whom we are going to interview it its uh, process is very, quite similar to the interview process whereas in the interview process we talk in person person to person right there is one person uh, from whom we collect information whereas in 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 case of focus group it's a group of people so that that uh, you no know, changes the method and all, of course the result on and the context where we actually go for focus group so focus group is a carefully planned group discussion okay it's not that uh, all of a sudden we thought of doing it and um, uh, whoever is available let us sit and uh, do the study it's not like that it's a very much planned group discussion and you have to design it or you have to prepare this one uh, for a uh, for a period or you have to prepare the setup and then only you can have this type of data collection okay of course here the pop, uh, the person who are going to get involved in the focus group they should be interested here it is very important to have some kind of you know uh, informed consent for all those cases especially for interview observation content analysis whatever we are doing we need to understand that whenever we are collecting data or collecting information from a human okay so uh, taking consent to participate in that study is very important so for almost all cases wherever ergonomics data collections are involved you have to take care this particular um, uh, format that is the you have to take uh, you have to brief the protocol to the participant to the subject we call them participant we call them subject or uh, you know the people who are actually participating in your study so everybody should be aware what is the motto of this particular um, uh, particular uh, method or why you are collecting data how their information will have uh, you know uh, you will maintain uh, the secrecy of their information like you know you cannot make it public individual information it is not right right so ethically it is not correct so you have to take care of this type of all ethical issues and once they are convinced that yes uh, this particular type of information or this partic participating in this type of discussion is not going to harm or they are willing to do that then only they can participate so a, a form where all these things are mentioned in in a in a, in a particular format then they can uh, they can sign in that form and you can keep it as a in evidence as an evidence that yes they have 
consented for this information. So, for any individual uh, human experiment, you should have this signed informed consent. Also, one thing everyone should remember for this uh, once someone is going to participate in your study it is not that you are going to force them that if you join you have to uh, continue for uh, this many days this many hours or uh, these many studies it is not right. So, it may happen that in between uh, th there are possibilities for some reason for uh, uncertain reason they may withdraw themselves you should be, uh, allow them to do so okay you cannot uh, force them to uh, participate in your study you can request however it is not mandatory so that point also should be available in the signed informed consent form okay then they are very much comfortable and it's not that why they are withdrawing themselves they should be uh, uh, they are it is mandatory for them to you know uh, explain for any reason they can withdraw themselves from the study and you have to accept that and in some cases that is why uh, number of samples keeps on changing from one experiment to other experiment ok. So, that 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 is the uh, uh, that happens and you have to accept that fact ok. It is not only for focus group for any kind of human experiment wherever you are collecting data this is mandatory. So, uh, again coming back to focus group study, uh, in, in 1991 um, uh, Professor O'Donnell uh, he elaborated that it consists of 8 to 12 members. This focus group study when we are talking about focus group, it is important to understand how many members will be there in this particular uh, study right. So, uh, is it 3 members or 4 members how many members. So, he explained or he elaborated in detail and he mentioned that the number of people can vary from 8 to 12 members and of course, the mediator the, the person who will be asking question and who will be leading the whole discussion will be from the research group ok. Members are a sample of the customer or the end user of course, as uh, I mentioned in the very beginning. It is organized into relatively homogeneous group. So, the group has to be maintained ok. <coughs> from in terms of socioeconomic background, in terms of uh, education background and many other aspects, it has to be very much homogeneous. If it is not homogeneous, the perspectives are different, ok. Perspective towards a particular product, particular concept definitely it varies. So, whenever you are collecting information or you are conducting such focus group study, the group has to be homogeneous in nature. These are more likely to produce the desired exchange of information of course, between members rather than a flow of information from individual member to the leader. It is like it is an exchange. So, it is not that always always a person uh, from the participant, uh, participant is telling something to the to the leader or to the researcher, it is not like that. Uh, but, uh, the information can flow from one member of focus group to other member. And that way we gather information ok. So, this is very much. So, how do we conduct this focus group study? It is very much experienced with of course, initially we can train the researchers. However, it, it absolutely depend that how, uh, how we are actually conducting the study. So, depending on the conduction method conducting how we are uh, starting the discussion and how are uh, we are moderating the discussion depending on that the information or quality of information will change. So, it is very much skilled based job or uh, you need real experience to conduct focus group study. So, when we do this what we do? We postulate a scenario or a story normally with regard to product design 
So, the product that you are going to evaluate or that the concept that you are going to uh, or you are trying to understand. So, you have to build a story upon it. Okay. The scenario refers to the sequence of event that outline a person's interaction with a particular product. So, it, uh, if you are conducting or you are trying to understand about a mobile, it has to be the all things, the scenarios uh, will be related to the mobile phone. If it is related uh, to a website, the, the scenario has to be uh, the, the story that, that you are trying to build in the beginning of your discussion that has to be related to that particular website. So, people in every age, in every place and in every society have used stories to consider and communicate their experience. So, that is allowed. Okay? Specifically, they are asked to use these scenarios to illustrate what is good and what is bad about the existing product and that are directly and indirectly related to the prototype product. So, uh, similar uh, uh, product line will be there and then from there. So, here a product does not mean the uh, typically tangible product. Product can be a service, product, similar service, uh, product can be a website, many other things. Okay? So, product means the ultimate design. So, the interviews are taken uh, are then asked to use this scenario as a context within which to evaluate that particular prototyped product. So, that way we can uh, do the focus group study. So, this procedure is useful in, in that it encourages the interviews to consider how they actually use existing product and that these products are not really ideal. Okay? So, this procedure restricts the scope of the evaluation task which might enhance the interview's ability to complete the undertaking. So, very very important uh, thought over here. The idea of the constraints might enhance such task scheme paradoxical given the widely held belief that such activity requires as few restraint as possible. Okay? So, finally what happens when the scenario based procedure provides the interviews with a naturalistic communication tool. So, uh, there is a scenario and they are actually discussing about a scenario and scenarios uh, seems to allow people from different background to discuss uh, that particular product by providing a common and perhaps natural sense making mechanism. So, it becomes very easy they, everyone every member of the focus group can relate themselves with that particular scenario. So, then it becomes very easy for them to understand, to, uh, to give the feedback on this particular aspect. Okay? So, here building that story, building that scenario is very, very uh, important. So, it is not that you know at one day I suddenly realize I have to conduct a focus group study and by chance I have, I have the homogeneous group available with me and I start doing my focus group study. It is not. You really need to postulate the whole thing beforehand. You have to uh, keep everything ready and then only you can conduct this particular study. So, let us go by the step by step procedure which is very important. Earlier also we did the similar thing for other tool. First is scenario generation. Second is you analyze those claims whatever is coming out and then you e evaluate the situation. So, when we are talking about scenario generation what it is, what it says. So, ask the interviewees to develop a set of uses scenario to exemplify the distinctive and typical uses situation for an existing product that are related to the product that is going to be evaluated. So, if you want to evaluate a particular pain, what you have to do is you have to ask the interviews to create or to understand or uh, design a scenario where similar type of products are being used and the, uh, the group members are somehow 
use that particular product, used, uh, have some experience to, uh, uh, towards that product and all. Okay. So, the interviews, interviewee who is going to take. So, they, they has to develop this particular part. Okay. The scenario could be illustrated using the task step approach. Okay, step by step. Okay, so if you want to use pen, so how do you use it? If you want to use mobile phone, how do? What are the steps? So using mobile phone, if you want to message someone, so what are the steps to be followed? Okay, or through a storyboard. Of course, it's a very uh, common practice, and maybe it is possible to role play. play. Now, the last component are quite rare, uh, mostly we go by the you know um, uh, storyboard type or uh, giving the steps of the procedure how do we use that particular product. So, each approach lead the, leads the group to focus on different aspect of that interaction. So, someone may be interested when, when we are talking about the use of a phone, someone may be interested in the opening the cap, someone may be while writing, someone uh, how the grip is, okay. The, the interaction points uh, will change depending on the uh, user's interest, right. So, with that particular product and each approach encourages attention to different product characteristics very important so from from here only we will get to know about these characteristics now once we we have that so of course uh, here uh, very important we can have the recordings uh, so that we can use them later also we can do it on the spot okay but as we have a video recording facility audio recording facilities normally we practice to record them okay so what how do we do this claim analysis so ask the interviewees to identify the features of these products that they consider very much significant so it's absolutely on the participants okay so they are the owner of the whole study here okay so we ask them that what are the significant considerations they have okay so one approach of performing the uh, this particular activity is to use large sheet of paper on which the group will write a title to define a particular feature. So, those information later we can use it. So, that is also possible. Also, we can have the recording. So, having written this particular type of features on the top of the sheet, the group then generates comments about this particular feature. So, one person write about one particular feature, another about another feature. So, we will have maybe four or five features of a single product from different group members, right. So, uh, it may happen that kind of feature which the designer himself or herself may not thought of. However, it can come up from the focus group discussion because the par participants or end users are open to think. Okay, so here is the beauty of this particular tool. So, for each comment, ask the participant to determine whether it is good or desirable or whether it is bad or undesirable. So, we you just uh, take opinion on the significant uh, on the on those particular concept. Okay, it might be useful to divide the paper into two columns may be positive and negative or you can have common and then later you can understand or you depending on the type of information that you have received you can segregate them okay based on this segregation you have varieties of feature so you know at the end that what you need to take what you need to discard so that type of thing uh, can generate after this analysis and in the evaluation phase. So, you introduce the interviews with the alternative concept. So, you have all the earlier concept, earlier products. Now, you have your own, the new one, whichever you have generated, okay. So, now you introduce that and these concept might be the result of design team activities or might arise from the 
previous focus group. It is absolutely depend like you know you conducted one focus group earlier and you have some information from there you developed a particular product and now you are going to again test it with the other group member uh, other uh, focus group and uh, then you try to take view that how differ it is or how improved it is. Normally definitely we always try to improve our product right. So, any features any uh, features which are positive in nature we try to incorporate and the features which are negative in nature we try to remove them. So, whichever are positive so we must have incorporated in the new design and we are going to test it that this is being accepted by the this particular focus group member of the focus group or not. So, ask the group member to uh, rescript their scenarios they have developed their own scenarios earlier with the earlier products. Now, let us let them uh, rescript it with the, the current product. Okay. So, replacing the existing product with the new product and evaluate how it features would emphasize or de-emphasize whatever. Okay. So, depending on the what product it is, what feature it is, uh, the pros and cons whatever they have identified earlier. So, what will happen at the end? You will have a comparison that what was there and what was new, what was good, what was bad. Okay, have you, uh, uh, is it, uh, was it like, you know, uh, could you uh, remove that bad information or bad or negative things from the uh, new concept or you have in, uh, have you introduced something good into that new concept. So, you will get more clarification on these points. So, what are the advantages? So, group interviews allow the researchers to survey a large number of opinion quickly. So, you know, it's a it's a group, right? It's it's a group of 8 to 12 members. So, if you have a large group, you understand it really represent that particular user group. So, within a very short period of time, you have a very quick view that how do you collect that particular information, okay? How, how good your product is. So, group interviews can also overcome two of the problems associated with individual interviews that you know normally it happens that when you are doing one to one interviews it is not possible. So, you take lot of time here at one go you get several information within short span of time. However, there are disadvantages it is not always so, so pe people will definitely always go for focus group it is not like that depending on the context depending on the product depending on the type of evaluation you are looking for you have to choose you should go for the personal interview or you should go for the focus group it is not that always it is advantageous there are some disadvantage to this particular tool as well. So, what is disadvantage? The analysis of the data derived from the group interviews can be time consuming very much okay because if you have n number of information. So, if you are looking for a focus group discussion and uh, uh, the discussion must have continued for 20-25 minutes, it is a uh, it is a large data set right. So, you have uh, you should have enough time or enough uh, skill to uh, segregate those data segregate those information and you you uh, get the data. So, these are some disadvantage whereas, in case of interviews you have very specific if you if you have a structured questionnaire you know what you are going to get out of this particular interview even if you spend 20 minutes time for a particular structured interview at the end you know what are the data is coming right you have uh, already uh, method to extract that but here it it becomes little difficult in some cases when the you know group is big and uh, uh, number of points discussed is more then in those cases it is little difficult okay let us take some example now here 
Again, I ask every participant over here that do this particular study or you, you practice this at home you know, using a particular product you must have developed earlier or just an example you know you, you take so uh, previous version and the new version you take and you do the study and then you continue ok. So, you, you practice that how it is possible. So, if you do not get 8 to 12 members maybe you can practice for 4 5 members. However, it is advised that you go for the 8 to 12 members. Okay, now let us take the example. So, example of electronic wallet intended to replace the traditional wallet. Okay, so this this particular so we, we have designed that particular electronic wallet whereas we are trying to replace the traditional wallet. So, the objective of the following case study was to evaluate a particular electronic wallet prototype. So, we know how the traditional wallet works ok. So, we, we have varieties varieties of traditional wallet whereas, we have designed an electronic wallet. So, four individual groups of six interviewees were asked to develop the scenario exemplifying how they currently use the wallet ok traditional wallet and the electronic banking products like ATM and internet internet banking product. So, they, they have been asked to develop such scenarios. S here four focus group ok. So, number of people in each group I have not mentioned here, but group num uh, number of groups were four. So, these the, the, the interviews were given pens, pencil, paper and instructed to illustrate that usage scenario. Maybe if required the illustrations uh, maybe they can draw or they can write uh, or no using their pen and paper the scenarios they can have their storyboard they can describe it is in a step by step process or something like that ok. So, the participants were then asked to identify features of uh, these situation that they consider very significant. So, here it is very important that the owner of the scenarios are the participant they can play with it or they really want to uh, they, they are going to give you the information how they are the other scenarios are which portion of the scenario is very important which one. So, when we are talking about the uses of wallet no how do we keep money how do we take out money how do we uh, keep the notes all these things varieties of information they are the only owner will give the information about it ok. So, the participants were then asked to elaborate both what is good and desirable in that particular case like pros and what is bad and undesirable about those features that they have identified in that particular group is clear. So, they were introduced to an electronic wallet prototype. So, once this is done they will be introduced with an electronic prototype and instructed to evaluate how the features of the new technology would emphasize or de-emphasize the pros and cons identified earlier. So, they have the traditional wallet experience and there they have identified all the pros and cons. Now, they have introduced with the new technology and uh, new product that is the electronic uh, wallet and then they can compare and they explain they are being explained that how you are going to use that electronic product. Now, they are being asked that how the what are the pros and cons they developed in earlier in traditional is matching to this new product. If it is exactly match then uh, you know it is it is like something you need to really work on. However, it is expected in the new design the number of pros has been increased and cons has been reduced it is expected ok. So, depending on the, the type of product the percentage will change. So, two of the features short, uh, no, storage and access here in this particular example was discussed and that were identified by the participants. So, in this particular example they discussed about only storage and access of the wallet not the other features ok. So, here they have identified pros and cons about the storage and access 
on the traditional wallet and the electronic wallet. So then definitely they have compared it and they have come out with the result. Now if we talk about the related method, so focus groups uh, the closest is the individual interview as I mentioned earlier also that in individual interview you get information from a single person whereas uh, in the focus group you get information uh, from the uh, from uh, group of people right so in that case it becomes very easy for you to have common understanding common data so this is very very useful tool in in the field of design okay so when we really develop new product we go for this type of uh, tool very fast you know it's uh, we gather information very fast okay so and it's uh, testing your prototype also becomes much easier if you go for this type of method okay so um, reliability and validity the lack of standardization that it implies inevitably you know raises the concern about reliability so as i mentioned earlier also you know uh, it's a very much skilled base how do you really collect those information so how do you able to scrutinize them it's it's very much you know depending on that and of course biasness you know it's it's uh, if the person the who is the researcher are already biased and then you know uh, they prompt uh, the way they should look for the product to the participant then it becomes the data becomes a little biased in nature so these are some difficulties that we have for this type of tool however for a preliminary result definitely we can take up this type of uh, this particular tool and of course here i would like to mention that you know it's 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 not uh, no it's not a guideline that if i am going to design a product and uh, i want to evaluate it i should go for focus group or i should go for interview it's absolutely depend what objective you have drawn for your study so based on the objective only you can decide which method is suitable for you okay it can it may happen you can have better result in the content analysis okay so it's not mandatory that you go for focus group or you go for interview or uh, observation okay it's not mandatory so uh, what do you need uh, for this type of uh, study what tool you need the focus group requires only few pen pencils because you know you collect information from from them and uh, of course some papers it's always better we have a recording system uh, audio recording or video recording then uh, latter also what you can do you can analyze the data and you can get better information okay uh, in summary we can say focus group are designated to elicit the reactions from participants about a particular topic it's very important only a particular topic okay and to generate ideas and concept that will help the client to understand the subject area which is under study now here focus group study it's not always towards end of your research focus group study you can conduct at the beginning to understand the market to understand the um, uh, the uh, existing product also you can use the same method the uh, that particular focus group study to evaluate your own new designed prototype okay so both the cases it is possible similarly interviews also you can do even content analysis okay in content analysis also what you can do once you have the uh, the new uh, new um, system new method ready or new uh, process ready or new product ready you can test it through content analysis then how the whole process has been reduced what are the benefits available uh, for your uh, new product that is also possible so all these method uh, starting from observation, um, content analysis, interview and uh, focus group study you can use at any point of time of your whole research. However, it is advised that we start with 
these types of uh, method initial at the initial stage so that we can have a broad elaboration broad view of the context okay that we are going to research upon okay so that's why we can start with them of course we can use them at the end of the research as well thank you for today and we will start more about the task analysis from the next class thank you mm -hmm.